about them there brake noises and roughness. This is a this is a little thing. Some of this stuff here is gonna. <laughs> what's going on? What's funny about that? Some of this yeah, stuff. He's, he's having a hard time, and you're laughing it out, man. You know, I mean, head gasket. You know. But anyway, people always get scared. You know. All right. So this is somebody's gonna sound like review, but you basically need to go over that. So to deal with brake noise. What do you do about a brake noise complaint? Do you randomly apply lube, paste, and all sorts of spray or whatever else, hoping a problem will go away for a while? Well, Look at that boy smiling over there. He don't need to. All right, so noisy brakes are not squeaky door hinges, okay? You got that? Now, usually the chemicals are only a part of the solution. Try to do it right the first time. To begin with, do all the things, like you got a machine and rotors. They get through the rotors, you know, you got to do it the right way. But if a car comes back with a noise complaint, you need to at least know where to start with your diagnosis. Now, we, what are we going to do about a noise? Okay. Now, the average human here is going to be here between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Human hearing can tolerate up to 130 decibels, about which is likely to sustain significant damage if the exposure is prolonged. Airplane taking off, firecracker, balloon pop, fireworks at least three feet, rifle, handgun. Shotgun. See that? This is what you're talking about here. Now, right here is where you're going to start sustaining damage if you keep it on for a long time. And all this stuff is out there. All right. Now, what causes it? Brake squeals, undampened high frequency vibrations. Basically, what it is. And so, when the brakes are applied, little surface irregularities in the rotors act like speed bumps. And actually, the brake pads are jittering over those speed bumps and it causes them to jump and skip. And if they're not dampened by shims, like these, or, or loosened the caliper mounts, which is some, somebody left the anti-rattle clips out like they weren't supposed to do, they shake and vibrate and might make a high-pitched squeal. Okay? So, you got to modify or change something to stop a noise. All right, what we got here? We got, you can change or shift the frequency of the resonant vibration, and that's difficult to do. On well, some of your exhaust systems, you'll see they've added these little dampers that are just hanging out there, looks like you got no job. You know, they're sticking out of the exhaust, they look like on the Crown Victorias. You see, if they look like a can, it's welded onto a thing, it's sticking out there. And that changes the resonant frequency of the exhaust, so it's out of the range to where it's going to make these drone hum noises and all. Uh, sometimes you can isolate it, you can eliminate the transfer path by putting a rubber mount on it. These per, I mean, little purge solenoids go, tut, 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 tut. and so you don't hear those. They mount them on a floppy, soft piece of rubber there, because that rubber is not going to transmit that noise. Also, you might notice that they have these braided ground straps sometimes going from the engine over to the body. If you put a solid copper ground strap, you may get engine noise going through that ground strap in the body, and that drives people on the wall. The little pulsation damper, and that looks like a little diaphragm in the uh, fuel rail, is a Basically, so you won't hear the injectors, you know, changing the pressure in that fuel rail and bouncing against there. Uh, dissipate the noise by insulation or absorption treatment. And that's done with grease, chemical, etc. And with good brake pads and rotors, we tend to do this while servicing the brakes. You know, sometimes you'll have this stuff that you put on the back of it. It's uh, greasy stuff and it helps. Now, every component of the brake system has a different resonant frequency. The caliper's got different resonant frequency the brake pads, and because of mass density and sometimes the shape of it, and the lower natural frequency due to greater mass of the caliper can cancel out or dampen the natural frequency of the caliper bracket. Um, you know, some of the hybrid vehicles, because they have a natural resonant sound that they make because of the, the way when the hybrid's operating, uh, they've actually got a uh, noise canceling feature built into the radio on the car. And if the radio fuse blows and the radio's not working, you may hear a noise you wouldn't hear. And all you got to do to fix that noise is put the radio fuse back in there. So that, have you ever used noise canceling headphones? Like when I was cutting the grass, I'd get some of them cheap noise canceling headphones with a little battery in there. And I could turn on that noise canceling thing, and I couldn't even hear that motor. <coughs> you know, y'all use that stuff in the military, any? Noise canceling stuff? Oh, uh, for when they do hear it is. Yeah. So well, basically, when you're in the military, you got to be able to hear, you got to be able to hear things. Don't you? What, with mine, I had to use those headphones. So yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's the thing. Okay, uh, when the brake, all brakes make noise, right? Well, when it contacts a rotor, it's going to oscillate and vibrate. That's what I was talking about earlier. That means the combined system of all of them on each wheel will will vibrate at the system's natural frequency, and that's the squealing noise you hear when there's nothing wrong with the brake. You hear that? Now sometimes you'll have that little reed that gets against the rotor and it 
let you know your pads are wore out like your mama's truck was doing. Remember that? A little reeds wore slam down like that. Now, the excitation and frequency are applied. They break where you can get hot spots. See them hot spots on that rotor? As the components heat up, it might develop these hot spots cause the rotor to have different regions of friction. Furthermore, on those hot spots, it gets harder than it is on those spots that aren't hot spots. Everywhere you see it, it's blue. Uh, my contention is it's a little harder there, and even if you machine those rotors, you're going to find out that they're going to do, come back to pulsating again because uh, some of them are going to wear more than others. That can generate noise, but it doesn't always. It can also create pulsation. Well, now what you got right here in the wheel well, you're going to, all of this stuff is like an echo chamber. The wheel well picks it up and amplifies it, makes it seem louder than it really is. Uh, and the passenger compartment amplified noise within a reflective wheel well. So basically, you know, you got your big wheel wheel back, big diaphragm in here. Rear brake noise, if the brakes aren't worn, can be caused by a lot of dust in the brake drum. If you hear rear brakes squealing, a lot of times all you got to do to fix that, pull them off. If the shoes look good, nothing wrong, nothing no spring broke, laying against the drum or something, just get that dust out of there and wash them off. But make doggone sure you wash them with something wet. Do not blow that stuff with air, okay? Bad news if you do that. All right. Sometimes lines will be noisy even if that's the only problem they have. This guy here riding on the wrong side of the car, you know what I'm saying? All right. Now, the linings may need to be replaced to take care of noise. I have seen situations where there was a brake noise that uh, was just, you take it apart and you couldn't really see anything wrong with it. You know, couldn't really tell anything was wrong with the rotors. Everything looked really good. And uh, the pads had plenty of lining left on them, but you replace the pads and the noise go away. <laughs> you know, that's not a, you know, 100% every time, but I'm going to have run into that. And I like shoes too. Like, for example, the brake shoes on the back of my Taurus, and it's got drum brakes on the back of it, that 07 Taurus. Uh, when I'm taking off in the morning back and out, it sounds like they're more slam out and scrubbing against the drums. But when I pull the drums off and look at them, they look just fine. Now, I could replace the shoes and take care of that problem since I know that it's okay and it ain't hurt nothing. You know. All right, now here is a F-150 scrubber. This is a really important little lesson right here. I want you to see this. Let's see if I can make this play. Hear that? See that moving? Now I'm going to stop this long enough to tell you that this guy came to me and he said, I noticed that when I was pulling up to a stoplight out here, you know, scrub, 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 even, but when I applied the brake it went away. And it was loud enough to where people standing by the road would look at the truck when it was pulling up. So I took it over here to, you know, X brand or whatever tire store it was, I don't know where, and he says, and they put brakes on it and machined the rotors. And it did a little better for a couple of days, and then the sound came right back. So I went back over there and told them it was still doing it, and they replaced the brakes again and put brand new rotors on it. Okay. Well, you, what's your idea now? Two days later, it's still doing the same thing again. They've replaced the brakes twice. They put a ro they machined the rotors once, and they put a rotor on it. Put rotors on it the second time. What's wrong? <laughs> well, the guy that Ray was work was here then, the guy named, the, named Ray that was a real clear thinker, he says, why don't, this is a four-wheel drive truck, he said, why don't we just put it up on the lift, pull the wheels off and put it in four-wheel drive, let it run on the lift, and just see what we see. What we saw was what you saw. We could see the rotor doing this, and we could put a dial indicator on it, we could tell it had a heck of a lot of lateral run out, okay? Now I'm going to start the video back. The hub, we measured the hub, and it had lots of lateral run out. We put a new hub on there, and it had almost none. $180 for that hub at the time. You see that? And this got rid of all of that, too. And putting a hub on there took care of it. You got it? Quick, simple lesson. Don't neglect the hub. 
Pull the drum off, check the hub for lateral run out. Good to have a dial indicator in your toolbox, Zach. Okay. So what's the hub? Huh? What's the hub? What's that? Oh, what's the, the hub, hub is the part, that part, this part right here. Oh, okay. That's the hub. That's where the uh, rotor hooks. If this is warped, then the rotor's going to be moving. Sure. All right. Come on. Yeah, I was trying to play the video again. All right. ABS pulsation, and this is normal brake roughness. ABS pulsation is felt while braking and taxi is lost at one more wheel. During panic conditions like that, lose gravel when the tires are unloaded on uneven, uneven road surfaces or on a wet, snowy road. Now, verify the customer concerns. Yes, and that's what we took a whole bunch of stuff. But the brakes ought to be tested at low speed to verify the vehicle is safe to drive. Observe traffic law. Duh. Don't get out there and feel like, yeah, baby, this thing here is a Corvette. I'm going to be running at 160 miles an hour to check the brake. You know? and get out there and observe the traffic laws and don't be stupid. Right? You know? All right. <coughs> Select a reasonably smooth and level road where the, you'll see the road runner come through there in a minute, where the highway speeds are legal that we use for brake testing. Turn off the radio and the air conditioner and roll down the windows. When you're really trying to hear it, that's what you'll do. Stop it lightly from 10 to 15 miles an hour several times with cool brakes and listen to what you hear. Stop it while driving forward and backwards. Get it back it up, going forward. Stop the vehicle twice from 40 miles an hour to heat up the brakes and recheck for noise. Now if you're driving near a wall or a building, you ever done that? Pulling up to the drive through you hear a noise coming out of your car you didn't hear before you, you know, that's, that's a good plan. If you can find a wall to drive next to, you can get some, you know, feedback on that. Now this is my sister and me in 1964. Uh, this tractor had no brakes and required great skill riding. You couldn't stop it. If it got going down a hill, there was no brakes. All you had was your feet on the pedals and all that. And no, we didn't live in a gray world. Everything was colored just like it is now. Right? Who is this? Huh? That's me and my sister. Yeah. That's me and my sister. <laughs> In 1964. Yeah, that's it. Just like yeah. <laughs> right. uh, lateral runout is not our friend. Now, this is a good rotor. This one here had lateral runout. That's what we were just seeing on that video I showed you. You got me? Lateral runout. You know what lateral runout is, right? Sometimes on a rear wheel drive, I mean on a front wheel drive car, you can take a rear wheel off when you got something going on back there, and you can spin that hub, and you'll see it go. Ee, ee, ee. Because they've slid into a curb or something and it's bent it a little bit. You gotta replace it. Alright, disc thickness variation is another thing. That's what you got going on over there. It's either got lateral run out or you've got disc thickness, thickness variation and it may be on both sides. Uh, every time those pads go past that thicker, thin place, there's this girl that was talking to me one day in Enterprise. She was a student out here, and she said this guy that she knew was telling her something was wrong with the engine. I said, how come? She goes, because my car does this when I'm stopping. And, nah, that's, that's rotors. And so, uh, you know, we got her some rotors and put on there and took care of that problem right away. It's really amazing how many times somebody will feel something wrong with the brakes and claim it's an engine problem. You know, I don't get that. All right, lateral runout occurs when two axes are not <laughs> parallel to each other, such as the axes on the channel of the hub. Maybe called by improperly torqued wheel nuts. This guy's going to break that off. I mean, he really needs to be careful with that. When he told yo-yo you know, doesn't use a torque wrench or the right torque stick. Okay? All right. Yeah. Uh, so what causes lateral <laughs> run-out problems? Got that? I've got this same thing here. Now, they do make this thing. I've never used these lateral run-out correction plates, but if you're working on a really, really expensive car and you don't want to spend a lot of money on having your rotors turned and all this, this brake align people make these lateral run-out correction plates, which you can put on there and straighten that lateral run-out out with a shim. It's got, you know, thick and thin spots, you know, like for whatever. Anyway. I just wanted to show you that because you may run across it sooner or later. Now, lateral run out can also be caused by bearings that aren't tightened up right. This is like on the Ford Ranger. You got a bearing here, you got a bearing here. See those two bearings? And that's what they look like when they're out there like that. Um, and this right here, you don't, somebody on the Ranger the one time when they put it back together, they put an impact wrench on that darn thing. Me. You don't do no, I wasn't you. That this was been a long time before you came here, and I had to actually get replaced with nuts. <laughs> but he did not do it that. Was yeah, me, right? that. No, no. But what you gotta do is get a pair of pliers and tighten it real gently while you're spinning it to make sure the grease squishes out of there because we repacked the bearings, you remember on that one the other day? And uh, whenever you're spinning it, uh, make sure that the roller seat, tighten it up, 
I mean, all you can almost do it with your fingers, but just tying it in this and after where when you put your little cage or where you can put your cotter key through there. All you got to do. Isn't that the axle? Uh, no, that's not the axle nut. You're thinking about front wheel drive. I'm talking about like Gene's truck or the Ranger, okay? All right, well, lateral run out occurs when two axes are not parallel. Always the same thing. All right, corrosion between the rotor and the hub. <coughs> See this cleaning process going on there? Stack up of part tolerances. When I say stack up tolerances, they're all within tolerance, but they're all on the loose side, you know, or something like that. Uh, spin the hub, rotor, rub the hub with excessive run out, which is what we saw earlier on that little thing. Damage from hitting a curb or a pothole. If you hit a curb or a pothole pretty hard, bam, you can actually, you know, change the angle or something. Turning rotors and drums off the car. Have you seen one of these machines before? When? Okay. 15 minutes ago? All right. All right. General Motors TSB says this. Now listen to this. This is General Motors talking. I thought this was pretty cool. They should only be resurfaced if the rotors are badly scored and the depth of the grooves exceeds 60 thousandths of an inch. There is excessive corrosion on the rotor faces more than 3 thousandths of an inch. A lateral run out more than one thousandth of an inch in thickness variation. Now you're going to check your thickness variation in like seven or eight different ways around the rotor. Measure it, write it on there with a sharpie. Move to another place. Measure it, write it on there with a sharpie. Move to another place. Go all the way around. Be surprised what you'll find that way. This rotor cannot be salvaged. Okay. They've actually, believe it, I've seen them worse than this. They All of them, they wore the thing slammed down to where there's nothing left of it. Wait, 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 wait. Huh? Go back real quick. They wore it, they wore all of it off, and all you're seeing here is the fins. How is that? How is it like that? Because Maybe. this this right here was machined in a way that uh, metal well, was, yeah, that the rotor surface until there was nothing left but the fins. You'll be surprised how often you'll see that. Because people will keep on stopping as long as it'll stop. And they'll just ignore all kinds of noise. That's the way people are, you know. All right, so you've got one of these out there. You see this thing? You guys are going to have to know how to read this. Okay? You've got to be able to make, use this tool to make your drum. I'll show you how to read it. Um, the first time I read one, I had no clue. Never seen it before. I thought about it, looked at it, figured it out. Ain't really that hard once you understand what you're doing there. So that's, if the drum gets too big, it's supposed to be replaced. All right, and then, of course, you got to mic it right there. I had uh, Nick doing that the other day. Uh, wash new parts. A lot of the times your new rotors left Cosmoline on them or some gummy sticky stuff. You got to wash it off with brake parts. Mm -hmm. Don't put the rotors on there with that gummy stuff all over them. You know, you're supposed to get that off. Let's of keep them resting. Now, here's an important point. When turning a rotor, there's more to it than you might think. Basically, what you're doing is you're truing this surface, where you're truing this surface up to that one. And if it's not mounted right or there's resting bumps on the hub surfaces, the machining process won't work even though it may look just fine. One time, somebody mounted one on Joey's dad's truck, F-250 or something, and machine those rotors, they look real good. When you drove that thing down the road and you hit the brakes, it started going <laughs> all over the road. I mean, it was terrible. It scared the daylights out of you. It made you afraid to stop, you know. And uh, so we had to come back and, you know, redo those because somebody, when they mounted them on the machine, they just machined them. They looked good, but they were, they had horrible run out because of the way they machined them. So be really careful about that. Make sure both sides are smooth. Own car machining, and I'll, I will tell you this, you're talking about the, uh, this, this uh, which I'd say Nicholas is the only person I've ever seen that likes this own car lay better than the one across the road for some stranger, and he really loves that one. Of course, you've done more with that one. On the, the Ford ones, you used to have to take a dial indicator, and you basically had to turn it through, and you had to make some little adjustments down here with some screws to set that run out. On ours, you basically got a little eccentric deal you know, this hunter woman guy. It's the picture of an old car brake light being set up through the rotor. Remember that picture. And I'm just going to give you a little warning. You may see this picture on your on your final exam on electude. Now, if you're not doing your electude stuff, you're going to wind up hurting really bad at the end of the semester. You best be getting on that stuff because you can do it at home as much as you can here. And that includes you, ZM. Okay. Now, we'll do this with a sanding pad. This is what I showed you guys earlier. 120 grit pad. The theory behind a non-directional finish is the scratches on the surface go in various directions, so there's less change, less chance of not to change, less chance of pad vibration and noise. And the non-directional finish doesn't last very long, but it uh, helps you know the pads to see and keep them from noticing any noise. 
some of the pads that we get, some of the pads that are like the $26 set of pads that don't cost that much, you know. Some of those, as you're seizing them and breaking them in, they'll stink and smoke. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, really good pads typically won't. The, the newest pads we've been getting cost a little more than that. And they don't, they're not as bad to stink and smoke as the other ones. Some people think they're a problem. After you machine it, you wash the rotor with water. Washing it with water removes all the microscopic metal filings and helps with noise and performance. Then you blow it dry with shop air. Don't fail to install the anti-rattle clips. Now, if the ones that are on there, like some sets of pads don't even come with them. Or they feel like you're going to be using the old ones. Uh, sometimes you'll get any rattle clips, clips out of a new set of pads that don't quite fit right. I don't like yeah. those. you got to work with them. You've had that before, haven't you? Yeah, we had to beat them in there. Yeah, it was bad. But anyhow, put a little brake pad hardware grease in the place where the ends of the pads, these are these abutments, make contact with the clips. The last time I gave one of these brake things, somebody sent me a message and said, hey, y'all come here and talk about lubricating the places where the pads are. So we do that in the shop, but we I didn't mention it there. Uh, clean any rust on the wheel before reinstalling it on a vehicle. If you've got rusted bumps in here on the wheel where it contacts, you can have issues because of that. Always use a torque wrench on the lugs. Don't be no second rate amateurs, okay? One of the reasons you're using a torque wrench on the lugs is the same reason I told you to use a torque wrench on a valve body on a transmission. You want them all to be exactly the same. You know what I mean? The one time my wife had her oil changed at a place over at Enterprise because it was expedient, you know. And uh, when we went on a trip, it threw a lug nut, and I found three other loose ones. And they went, rawr, 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 rawr. <laughs> put them on like that. You know what I'm saying? That's not a good plan. So if you're the guy that uses a torque wrench every time, or if you use the dog bone and watch the little, you know, the nice little marks on the end of it so you can tell you got it all. Anybody got any questions or comments? No, sir. Is everybody having a good time? Now, I will tell you this. What I was just showing you guys over there came home because you saw the same stuff I was just said you do it, right? Mm -hmm. You understood it better. Yep. You soaked it up better than if you, if you didn't have your hands on it. True. You might have been sitting there turning it into a skeleton like you did. <laughs> all, right. So, all right. All right, everybody, let's get shut down and head for lunch. Nice, guy. Uh...